Hi everyone, my name is as always Martin Mikus and welcome in another Photoshop video tutorial or I suppose to say Photoshop video course. Because today is something really great and I'm really excited about this. As you can see on your desktop, I prepared Photoshop composition for you. This kind of flying boats on this fantastic beautiful background I prepared on my own with some kind of extra elements like clouds. Uh, so what actually you can get from this uh, course? I, I'm going to show you. You're going to learn how to connect image with um, self-prepared, self-made background, how to add some extra stock images to your project, how to uh, do a drop shadow, how to drop shadow, how to do really great and natural looking shadow and some extra color effects at the end. Of course, all the things you can see uh, right now in this layer mode, I'm going to show you. It's quite messy right now, but during this uh, course, everything going to be clear and I'm going to put everything into the groups to make everything as easy as it's possible. So let's start our Photoshop composition course. At first, I have to remove all the layers I made. I hope I'm going to remember all the settings I've done here. It might be difficult. So let's remove all of this, delete layer, and I keep this um, and this layer, or actually I can close this project totally. And how are we going to start our project? We have to choose file, new, and as you can see the size of my project is with 300 thousand uh, three thousand I'm sorry height is two thousand five hundred and resolution I'm going to set at three hundred it's for printing and the first thing we have to do in this project is setting up our background color I'm going to choose a really nice uh, blue color it's not this one, obviously. I think it's around here. A bit darker than this. I think this one will be okay. It's not so strong blue color, but it's a bit bluish gray color, which um, looks really great for me right now. Yeah, something around this. So hit OK. And here, here we are, very uh, simple background. And the second step we have to do uh, very quickly it's adding our first stock images uh, to the project just one image right now let's do browsing bridge so hit file browsing bridge it might take a while and it's going to be a boat find on your computer proper stock image the thing we have to really find we have to find the uh, proper stock images as I said before, and it will be this boat. I have it here. About this boat, it's really simple to find uh, online, really right stock images for your project. This boat I found on DeviantArt, totally for free for any kind of use you you need. So you can find this kind of boats on free websites, even on DeviantArt, and just hit open. I wonder this size of the boat might be still a bit too big so I'm going to change the size a little bit so the first thing you're going to do very important thing is always adjust the size of the image to your project. So move this project using move tool to 
this image to our project and actually we can leave it like this but I think it might be too big still so I don't want to change the size of the image anymore I'm just going to make it smaller a little bit I think something like that it looks alright I think it looks really nice when we do uh, the main image small the effect it will be really nice so it's really small boat at the moment but um, that's the point I make it smaller I made it smaller than the previous one but I believe it's going to look really awesome uh, so here we are now go back to your background layer I'm going to call this background actually to, to not do such a mess and this layer I'm going to call boat remember to keep the order on your all uh, layers to put um, the layers into the proper order so my background layers I'm going to keep into the group so hit Control and G to put this into the group and I'm going to call this group background there you go and now I want some different color behind this boat actually so what I'm going to do I'm going to hit new layer then call it brush and now I'm going to choose just brush quite big size as you can see it might be even a bit bigger maybe and I'm going to choose white color and I'm going to change the flow up to 100 let's keep opacity at 20% I'm just going to hit once and twice I think it's okay to do this nice maybe now I'm going to make this brush bigger and hit once again to make this nice bright color behind the boat strength can be as much as you want of course so here we are I finished with preparing my background my boat is already here uh, so time to set up uh, some color and the thing I'm going to do I'm going to add some gradient map to make um, this image more uh, suitable I mean the boat and background make a bit more suitable to each other choose gradient map I'm going to change um, blending mode to soft light mm. And now we have to choose the colors. This one is very suitable, but it's still too yellowish. I'm going to choose the color a bit more uh, bluish, not so strong as this one. And this color is too orange. So I'm going to choose something soft, something way nicer. Uh, for this background take a look but I think it changed my boat color too much so actually I'm going to move this under the boat and put this into the group so that will be our background take a look I really like the way my background looks like we can change opacity if you think this uh, granny map is too strong and here is our background we are done with background so the first step and one of the most important part the base part of our project is already finished so we finished our base which is our background plus we add one stock image which is our boat the thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop shadow uh, under this boat layer can be above actually it doesn't have much influence 
and just to keep the rules it will be under the boat layer and of course we could just uh, drop some shadow put this down under the boat and that would be all uh, but it's really not so easy and I would say doing the shadow is the most important part right now in this project is um, probably the most difficult part in this project it's not so easy to make the right drop shadow under this boat layer we have to do something in this uh, kind of shape in the shape of the boat close to the close to the our boat and this shadow has to has different uh, tones so what I'm going to do I'm going to of course create new layer and I'm going to call this shadow I'm going to probably duplicate this layer a few times and at first choose elliptical margie tool I'm going to do this on this boat right over here just like this the, the, the size of the boat maybe maybe a bit smaller something uh, something like that we can change this uh, a bit later of course and then just pull it down under the boat just a little bit la la like I'm doing this then we have to fill in this space this selected space with some color I'm not going to use black color in the final result but right now at the moment and um, the, the easiest choice to will be uh, will be black color okay we are still on this layer so click right and then uh, transform or um, control command T to transform the image and what I'm going to do I'm just going to give the shape of this area as the same shape of the boat. You see, we can pull it up right here and che check how the boat is coming. I think now we got uh, pretty much the right shape of the of the shadow, maybe somewhere here. Okay. Now I'm going to hit right and just warp. So just transform the shadow to make it looks like kind of a tear. So do a shape which will be similar to the tear. It's not that difficult. I think right now we got something similar apply this image it's okay maybe it's a bit too big but don't worry right now it will be too big we'll transform this a bit later so change the opacity down to 15% 1 5 so here's our shadow and basically if I would um, blur this right now this shadow won't look natural that's why I'm drag down the opacity down to 15% it's not that strong and then I'm going to do some copies of this so now just hit ctrl alt j to duplicate this layer it can be called shadow copy and once again ctrl t to do free transform and just transform it like me a bit smaller tier right now over here it looks quite okay and once again control alt and j we have to control alt and j once again shadow copy number two control and t like free transform and let's make really big nice tier right now something like this I think it looks uh, all right now so press enter it looks okay so all the shadows I'm going to put into the group control G and I'm going to call this group shadow
to make it actually easier if we are sure we were we are done with this uh, we can merge all this group or do just all blur on its own I'm going to do uh, blur on its own because the strength of the blur uh, can be a different so I'm going to start with the smaller one I'm going to drag this down the small shadow has to have the smallest blur and the biggest shadow will have the biggest blur so the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to convert every layer to smart object it makes this work uh, much easier is I want to when I want to change this I'm going to change this into smart object and let's start with the smallest one so what I'm going to do I'm going to add Gaussian blur which is filter blur and Gaussian blur and as you can see more than 40 pixels it's obviously too strong so we have to look what makes this shadow blurry but keep the form as you can see around 10 pixels it's still too small because we keep the shape of the shadow so drag it up as long as uh, this part of the shadow is going to lose the shape I think around 18 might be okay in this case maybe a bit more we're going to see I'm going to do the same with the with the second one Gaussian blur once again and in this case around 18 was too small I think even for, for the first one was too small so I'm going to improve this a little bit now it's alright I think and the last one once again the last one has to be the strongest of course not more than 30 maybe around 25 will be okay and take a look how it looks like I think it's quite okay it's quite soft but actually it's still not something I'm looking for it's still not looking um, so natural as I want it to I'm going to change opacity down to 80% I think it's too strong right now and what I'm going to do I'm going just to duplicate this layer just duplicate group I'm going to change this it will be just a copy and I'm going to merge this group and con course control T to do a free transform and this part as you can see here's the shadow this one well let's make it a bit smaller it's really difficult part we have to make it look natural I, I think it's okay right now let's duplicate this um, once again Control J can be and Control T for transform. Maybe make it a bit bigger right now. And uh, as you can see, at the end of at the end of the road, this shadow finally looks like as we want it to. Still could be a bit better. I'm going to drag the opacity down even 40% as you can see it's very very soft and down to 40% and I think that's the right time to put all the shadow layers into one group control G and let's call it shadows alright so we keep everything in order and if you think it's too strong of course at every moment we can change opacity of the shadow it's not necessary but maybe around 
90% will be okay. And uh, I believe that the shape and the strength, everything is okay. But on the one thing that it's not suitable here is actually the color of the shadow. It's dark and it's really not suitable for the background. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit right and go to blending options in this group. I'm going to choose color overlay, which is going to change the color, obviously. And let's choose the soft blue, this kind of greenish actually color, nearly getting into the dark color, something like this. Uh, it looks much more suitable right now. It's very soft, so we can bring up actually opacity or if it's too strong, just... And in my opinion, this um, this shadow looks really impressive right now. It's something I was looking for. It looks natural. It has this um, softness, which is very important in creating shadows. So I'm, I'm really happy with the effect. If there is something you don't like to, of course, you can you can work with opacity to make this suitable for yourself, of course. I think I got the point. I got uh, something I really wanted to. So here's our shadow, our very natural shadow. So we've done our shadows. Um, I hope you follow this very well because I can simply say it was the most important part in this project. So right now we've done the background, we've done shadows and we have our boat. So next part will be about adding clouds to this project. So we finished our two basic, um, uh, two our basic parts, which is background and shadows. And now it's time to add something which add some spiciness to this image, add some clouds, which going to build all the drama on the image, which going to make this image looks realistic as we want it to. So let's go to our, our bridge, which I have actually open. Let's go to stocks and I hope you prepared your um, sky images. If not, there's not a problem. There's many free stock websites when, where you can find um, some images. I'm going to open this. I'm going to choose this two. Um, this one is just to add some really nice uh, mystical atmosphere to this image. And this one will be as a part of the background. So hit right open and at first I'm going to add this this uh, sky let's change the size of it of course to five zero zero for hail I'm going to drag this to my project and what I'm going to do I'm going to put this above the boat layer. Now just hit image adjustments and desaturate. And after this, let's see what screen going to make uh, to this layer. Actually, I'm going to put shadows above this right now because I don't want to get off of this beautiful shadow. So let's make above screen and just drag down opacity till the moment you feel it's not destructive for your image. I think it will be around 40% maybe. We have this mystical atmosphere on the image, but it's not actually influent our image in the negative way. We have really, really beautiful colors, maybe even lower than this. As you can see, we get this beautiful white atmosphere on the image. So it increase our white color on the back, but it works really great. It adds some 
of this mystical color on the bottom over here so this image looks like a um, kind of foggy uh, town foggy sea right now and the other cloud image we're going to add uh, under this boat layer so I already opened this and this image size is a bit smaller but it's actually okay because the thing I need I only need this part of the clouds it won't be necessary to have more of this and as I said before I'm going to pull it under the boat layer it's it's beautiful uh, beautiful position of this I hope so once again image adjustments and the saturate you don't have to do all of this you can press of course shift control U but of course it will be easier for you to follow all of this and right now I'm going to see how it works with soft light and how it's going to work with screen I think soft light it's a bit better for for this part actually and after we do this we can get off the parts we don't need to so add layer mask and just paint with color black of course um, when you choose the brush remember to add opacity at 100% and just remove the areas you don't want just like me very simple you don't have to be really careful it's not that important it will be it will be fine anyway no matter what you're going to do as you can see we didn't do this as perfectionist but it looks really fine it looks great right now but the problem is what the soft light made to this image and everything our sky is not strong enough right now it's too soft and this image is not looking really well right now it's not looking dramatic it's not looking impressive and mystical as we want it to so once again I'm going to drag this layer to my project so I'm actually doing this twice let me change the mode to soft light right now to see what I'm doing and adjust this into the same way as before what I'm going to do now I'm going to add layer mask and as you can see the color is not really suitable so let's make this suitable we use image adjustments and hue saturation on this layer and I'm going to hit colorize and as you can see you, you can choose the color which will be suitable to your background around 200 will be too strong so pull it down even a bit more around um, 190 will be okay just right now um, saturation around 10 in this case will be okay and just hit okay now I can invert this once again because I know how it looks right now so now just zoom it and on this black inverted layer we're going to paint with color black uh, color white on our clouds where we want some more here on the dark parts to make them more visible choose the brush of course but this time color white and look what is happening here it's impressive how beautiful effect we're going to get everywhere in this dark parts do this and our clouds will be much more impressive much more visible it's very important part when you want to do this the clouds won't be so impressive on your work just I'm going to paint this very quickly just example how to do this 
could be even a bit stronger but still it's a it's huge help take a look right now on our result and as you can see the the clouds are really really impressive are much brighter than before and um, which looks really great i'm really happy with this so i can say we finished our cloud uh, part for it uh, you can add of course a bit more uh, somewhere if you want more clouds but i think it's actually okay at the moment we don't want to make it messy around here so just this um, one part of clouds is uh, totally enough right now so let me put this into one group the clouds Control g and i'm going to call this group clouds and right now it's the part we go in into the final effect at first i want to do something great something which imitates the lights of the image i'm not going to uh, use lightning effects but i'm going to paint the lights on my own so i'm going to clear create new layer and i'm going to call this shadows once again but um, it's not really shadows i'm going to make this brush a bit bigger and choose the color some kind of soft bluish color uh, something like this i'm going to use opacity and flow 10 percent and just paint around the image to make it a bit more dramatic a bit darker probably when i'm doing this right now you cannot see the result but uh, the colors are changing i'm going to show you this take a look as you can see it's a bit darker right now um, i'm going to duplicate this now i'm going to call this shadows number two and now i'm going to change opacity to 20 and the same to flow 20. and once again i'm going to do the same but not so strong with the same color to make it even more dramatic a bit more darker just like it I think it's enough right now we make this image a bit darker so i'm going to put these two layers into the group Control g and i'm going to call this lights why i'm going to call this lights because we like improve the area on the middle we make this image a bit pop out popping out from the image and we paint in the dark colors around the project it makes this image uh, it makes this boat actually a bit more visible uh, for all of us and after we do this that's the right part to do final touch and to add all of the final effects we want to add to our image so um, I'm going to start with gradient map gradient map gradient maps are always great with everything I'm going to change blending mode to soft light at first and let's start with this very similar to to our first gradient map we used in this project this color was too strong i'm going to use something like this uh, a bit more bluish color and this color is too orange once again so i'm going to use something which is more yellowish uh, something like this looks really great so your gradient map supposed to look like this will be will be really great as you can see but opacity might be too strong so just I'm going to change this to 60% 60% will be will be fine uh, the next step after this will be uh, selective colors and in selective colors I'm going to start with science as you can see when I add more cyan it's it's something like a bit more saturated it's something i really like the same i'm going to add some yellowish color to make this a picture a bit more livable um to add some sunshine to this image that that that's the 
uh, simplest way I, I can tell about this uh, then blue a very similar but it's not changing much maybe a bit uh, magenta and the same you know it's not making big difference now it just improve uh, some it's just we are just adding some life to this image and then uh, I go to black and what we're going to do of course we're not going to blue color just add some yellow color to the boats and maybe a bit down here to add some red color on the top of the boat and the same about magenta that's great our boat is working really great with it take a look I'm really happy with the results um, we can work with color balance a little bit but mid-tones just check what works the best for you if it's color red mid-tones is pretty much the general look of the image will be in this case I'm going to add some cyan let's add some bluish color shadows obviously will be blue some cyan some magenta and highlights obviously it will be red color and some magenta or even no some yellow color and some red color as you can see it adds some contrast actually to this image and the last thing I'm going to do uh, from about the effect is curves just simply add some contrast I'm not using curves for anything d different than this let's go to red Hmm. Take a look how it's changing. Okay, like this. And I'm going to try some of this blue color. Take a look how it looks right now. I really love this warm effect plus some contrast which curves gave me. So I'm going to call this final touch I'm going to put this into the group I'm going to call this final effects and at the end I'm going to do something really great something which actually will be the cherry on the top of the cake I'm going to create a stamp Alt, Control, Command, Shift, and E to create a stamp. I'm going to call this Final, and I'm going to convert this into Smart Object. Why, of course, because I want to give myself opportunity to edit the effect I'm going to add, and I want to make this boat looking more mystical and more floating. So. I'm going to go to filter, go to blur gallery, and I'm going to call, uh, choose tilt shift, which is the best for this um, area, and adjust the tilt shift like me, and of course the strongest amount, the sharpness, I'm going to put on the top of this boat, and it's going to get blurry at the back of this and maybe a little bit on the top of it just just like this take a look if it's um, strong enough as you can see the back of it it's getting blurry I'm not sure what to do with the top of it 
it's getting blurry as well a little bit so uh, check everything here of course you can play with blur you can add a little bit more I, I think 15 is actually pretty much universal that's why I didn't change this I think it's not too strong not too small you can play with distortion and this effect it's very simple I just add something very simple and here we are that's um, that's the final result I'm um, I'm really satisfied with with the thing I've got here we have this beautiful shadow uh, we have this beautiful um, soft colors um, it's kind of magical as you can see the blur of this image at the back at some a um, mystical effect we have this uh, soft um, soft blur effect and especially this clouds as you can see add some mystical um, touch to this picture so that's the final result as you can see it's very basic uh, photo composition it's very basic photo manipulation and this project shows um, as I said as a basic thing it shows how basic and simple things can look really great how we supposed to start how should we start with simple manipulation to get really fantastic mystical effects i hope you enjoyed this course uh, this short course this tutorial uh, leave me some feedback leave your opinion what you think about this uh, show me your projects if you're going to do something similar and just thank you for watching see you soon in the next photoshop tutorial my name is as always martin and I was your instructor.